Hello you beautiful peeps, my name is John, welcome to my channel. Today this is part four of the series working on your Alarlo AM-X12 and today we're going to be talking about steering. Now there's going to be a couple of things in here for the more advanced that will be very basic but please just uh, bear with me. Uh, there's going to be four specific bits, maybe five sections so let's get straight into it. First one is very basic, turn on your controller, turn on your car and you see how it's facing the wrong way. Ooh, don't press the accelerator. <laughs> okay, left, right, but yeah, it still doesn't go back to center. That's because on your controller and all controllers should have this, you have an adjustment here. And as you see, I can put it right dead center. And as you can see, there you go. So that's number one. Number two. This is where the RC comes with the wheels not straight. As you see in this instance, it's facing outwards. They can sometimes face inwards. Um, a lot of uh, RC companies actually set them slightly out or slightly in because they believe that it helps a little bit. I like to keep mine nice and straight because I like them to go as fast as possible. So the way to actually adjust it is a very, very simple thing. Not the upper one here. This is called the tie rod. So it's not that one that we're talking about. It's the steering arms here. And as you can see, they've got a tiny little dot in them. I just use a small Allen key and you just turn them either inwards or outwards. Now, in this instance, the ball joints pop off, but I will just try and do two rounds. Oh. There we go. And that's now nice and straight again, both are straight. So that's number two. Okay, number three is again a very common problem. The steering's all the way to the left there. You turn on your controller, turn on your ESC, and you see it's all the way turning to the left there. So you go to your adjustment here, and as you can see, I can adjust it further to the left, but when I do it all the way to the right, it's still not center, and that's because the actual arm here is not straight. So what you need to do is firstly turn off your car just for the second. You need to make sure that the steering trim firstly is all the way in the center, which as you can see, mine is now dead center on that one. And then we have to just get into the steering arm. If you're looking for a different model, you should be able to find your steering arm there. On this one, you've got to take out one, two, three screws there. Very handy with a little, uh, I'll put this link in the description below. Just very, very handy. And now you can see that gives you access to the steering arm there. What you do is undo it all the way and just pop the arm off just for the second. Now, turn it back on, because as you know, we set it to the center, but we, the thing was off at that point. So turn it on and now that's gone right back to the center. So what you do is you just put your car down and just make sure that the wheels are as central as possible and then put it back onto the servo. We know that the servo is dead center. We've all set that now. So just gently hold your finger there just so it doesn't pop off. Come to your trim there and just double check that you can adjust it both left and right, which as you can see I can. So now I can turn that off. I can now get the screw and put that back in and then put that back on. Done. Okay, number four, again, is a very, very simple one, so it's worth doing. The problem is that when you're turning uh, on your controller, the wheels aren't turning very quickly at all. Double check that your screws aren't too tight. Let me show you. Oh, I've done that the wrong way, but there you go. So as you can see, so you can see that the servo itself is turning, but this is not. So. Undo some screws. Not too much, obviously. They, you know, you don't want them flapping around. Just give them a bit of a unscrew. 
and we're back to normal operating standards. Uh, I know it was this one that was too tight because I just tightened it myself. So that's a very basic thing that actually happens quite a lot. Again, I've received a couple of RCs that have got problems with the steering. It's just because the screws are too tight. And then onto the last one. And last but not least, number five, which is that the steering servo appears again like number four to not be strong enough to turn the wheels. So as you can see, similar symptoms. Now, if you're sure 100% that you've un or loosened all of the screws uh, and it's still having this problem, then it's more than likely the steering servo, sorry, steering servo saver. Got there in the end. And if you, if you see down here, actually, let me turn that off. Down here, there is a small uh, column here on the steering there, and it's got a little spring on it. And basically what that does, actually, I can show you. Here's what I prepared earlier. Uh, this is exactly the same design. Uh, this is from the WO Toys. But as you can see, this is a steering uh, servo saver. Got there in the end. Um, and it's got the spring on it, as I said, down there. And basically this sits here like that. The steering arm goes in from the right hand wheel and that goes to the servo. But as you see, if it's too loose, like what this one is, it's very easy for that to, to do that. And what happens is when your wheels, your front wheels hits a rock or something like that, the shock goes through and it does this. Now, if you didn't have this mechanism here, that goes straight onto the servo and breaks the gears. So this here is supposed to give a little bit to give you, uh, you know, some free reign to hit, to hit things and not break your servo every five minutes. But if it's too loose, then it just doesn't, as, as the steering servo is trying to turn, it's not actually turning the wheels. So as you see, if I tighten this up now, now look how much harder it is. So when that's turning, it's actually gonna turn the wheels. Do it even more, do it too much, and now you're gonna break your servo anyway because it's like you don't have a, a servo saver here at all. So it has to be about, I'd say about four millimeters up, like so. And as you can see on my one here, it's all the way down. So the way to fix that is very, very simple. Uh, you have to undo one, two, three, four screws. And then one of the steering arms here. Make sure you take this little bushing with it as well. As you can see, it's come off from there. And that's what it looks like. So that wheel can go out of the way. Then we can just move that top deck out of the way and pull up this whole column here. Just make sure that that's out of the way. Be aware there is a bearing here at the top that will come falling out. So just drag it up. And then you've got the steering arm here, pop that off and the servo arm there, pop that off didn't fall out this time, that's strange. So as you can see, see how weak this is. Okay, so tighten it up. Not too much. That's very good indeed. So put it back. Now you can attempt to do this when it's in position. It's so difficult, I've never managed to do it. The steering arm on the other side has popped off, but that's good. I can show you how to put that on as well. So that's back in position, making sure that the bearing on both the top and bottom are on and in. Why is that not going down? Is the bottom one not in position? Come on. See the bearing down there, the bottom one. Excellent. And the other side popped out, so we'll just pick that up. Ooh, come on, out you come. 
there you go you see how that bearing slid up slide that back down and you've gonna again got a bearing on the top and the bottom make sure that arm is across and slide that down so now we can put that back down and put the screws back in again not too tight and then this one goes back on the there's two holes here it goes on the outer one there so i can do that straight away nice put the steering arm back on onto the ball joint underneath there excellent and then that servo arm back on as well there we go so that's still on when i hold it down you see we've got full power back as well um, be aware that this is exactly the same setup that's on the w toys 144001 124016 all the way to 124019 and actually the Ishin EAT14 has the same system as well 144010 the brushless version of the 144001 um, so that is basically all of the uh, steering problems that you should encounter uh, the next video is going to be getting down to these little monkeys down here as simply as possible because it is actually quite difficult because there's two screws all the way underneath um, and currently there is a competition to win one of these beauties 250 us dollars worth uh, so i'll put a little card somewhere and a link in the description below if it's around what's that the 19th of march after that it's the competition is over so thank you so much for watching hit that like button subscribe to the channel take care stay safe bye bye